with Mass General Law Chapter 22, the Acts of 2022, signed by Governor on February 15th, 2022. I announce that this meeting of the Select Board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the Select Board's office via Zoom, and ask if there is anyone present who is also recording this meeting. Then say, if no one is recording, they're not. Let the minutes reflect that nobody else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. Or if somebody is recording, please identify yourself for the minutes. Uh, we have two hybrid uh, select people that are not here at this meeting, so all votes will be taken on roll call vote um, after each thing. And we'd like to welcome uh, Senator Comerford for joining us this evening. And we are, um, we are going to, good evening. We're going to be talking about the Hawk uh, thing that is on the uh, agenda for this evening, the Hawk signal light. I also have Chief uh, Mason here that will also chime in on um, whatever after you have spoken to us, um, Joanne. So uh, would you like to update us on what you know or have done with uh, the, the uh, DOT on this? speak with you just at the beginning of your meeting. Uh, so thanks to Carolyn for arranging that. Um, and thank you to the town and to the chief and to everyone um, who has responded to that terrible tragedy, the accident that occurred. So I speak tonight uh, reflecting uh, Representative Carey and myself uh, in our outreach on behalf of the town to MassDOT. So I've spoken with Dir Director Patty Leavenworth uh, at some length about Hadley and that particular intersection. And the director conveyed two things to me that I convey to you tonight. And, uh, and I will be, uh, of course, at your service with Dan uh, and our teams to do whatever the town feels is best. Um, but uh, the director con conveyed that they did send a team out and perhaps the chief, you know this already, but they did send a team out uh, shortly after the accident to look at the intersection and to do what is called brightening at the intersection. So um, renewing the paint job. She understands that that is not the totality of this. Um, and so then the director said that she would welcome a conversation with the town uh, and she would bring her team, uh, you know, so at the town's discretion and uh, with the folks the town says is our best um, to look at what else could and should be done at the intersection. Uh, the director said pretty plainly, you know, they are certainly looking at this, but they recognize both the expertise at the town level um, and also, you know, that, that you all will have ideas that they haven't thought of to make that and other intersections uh, safer. So that those are the two things that um, she conveyed to me that I pass along on behalf of Rep. Carey and myself. One of the things that has brun, uh, brought to our attention, and we had gone over this uh, a few years back when we were redoing Route 9, is that we really didn't want to have a crosswalk there to begin with, uh, being that it's only a short distance from the center of town where we have uh, lights, uh, push buttons for people to cross at any which way that they go. Um, and we really didn't want that there, but the DOT insisted on having that crosswalk there uh, to begin with, and they went forward and did that. Um, one of my theories is, and people can chime in, but my, my theories is, is that we don't need that there. Where it's such a short distance, I think it's a hazard with people crossing there because that light really doesn't uh, project... Uh, it says flashing, but people don't look up. They don't see it. Um, they just fly through the center of town, and that's like almost at a dead stop when they come to that at that place. Now, um, I really think that people should be walking down to the center of town and using our crosswalk uh, area and any other area. But I, as I understand it, that they're going to be maybe installing more of these along Route 9 as they proceed with 
uh, the rest of the uh, paving and redoing of our Route 9 project. I would prefer that they don't do that. I think that when they do this, they need to, you know, um, chime in on uh, to us on how we feel about it. I would like uh, our Chief Mason to chime in on how he feels about this because, of course, that's his uh, expertise area of, where, of what we should be doing. So, um, Chief Mason, would you like to chime in for uh, Senator Comerford, please? Sure. Um, thank you uh, for being here, Senator. So the Senator and I have actually spoken on the phone uh, about this issue uh, last week or the week before. So, I think she kind of knows how I feel, and I think everyone, at least here, knows how I feel about the light. Um, I don't, I can't speak to the discussion that occurred when it was put in because I don't recall those discussions and I don't even know if I was a part of them. What I can tell you is that I, I have never liked the light because I think it's confusing. Um, I think it's pretty evident that it's confusing judging by how many people drive through the light. Since, um, since the, cr the crash happened, we have been doing you know, a lot more enforcement in that area, and we've actually had plainclothes officers um, cycling the light, and then have, we have officers who are waiting to pull cars over if they run through the light. We've done it on two or three different occasions. One of them was just this evening. Uh, they cycled the light 10 times, and they stopped five cars that drove through the lights that were flashing. So that's, that's kind of the first point in that, you know, it's a 35 zone. Um, people on Route 9 drive faster than that anyways. And so when the light starts to flash, people will drive through it. That's number one. Uh, the second part of it is that, again, it's confusing. If you have to put a sign up on a light to tell people when they're allowed to drive again, that's a pretty good indication that it's a poor design for a light. If you don't know what to do and when you can go again, um, that's problematic from my, from my viewpoint. What I can tell you is that MassDOT, um, you have at least one more of these lights coming in in town. Um, it's going to be uh, on South Maple Street where the bike path is. So it's not going to be on Route 9. But you are getting multiple more crosswalk, standard crosswalk lights, which are those um, they call them rectangular, rapid, they got acronyms for everything. It's, a, it's just the standard rectangular sign that it will flash that looks more like what a regular crosswalk looks like. You are getting multiple of those types of lights that are going to be on Route 9. I think part of the problem is that crosswalks generally are at intersections and the crosswalk lights don't activate until all of the lights in the intersection are red and have been red. So everyone has already stopped. You don't have that with this Hawk light. You have 35, 40 mile per hour traffic traveling and then all of a sudden these lights activate and people have to figure out, number one, what does this mean? And number two, am I gonna stop? I can tell you that the people that we've pulled over for running through the lights give the same excuse that they give when they run through a regular red light. I didn't have enough time to stop, to stop safely, or I didn't understand what it meant, or I didn't think I could stop in time, so I just went through it. So I can't give you any arguments as to, you know, why people are running the lights. They just, like I said, it's the same argument when they run a regular red light. Um, my guess is, is that uh, I, as, as I, when I spoke with Senator Comerford last, um, when she was going to speak with DOT, my guess is, is that DOT has data on how effective these lights are. And I think that's really what we need. We need to know what is, how effective are these Hawk lights as opposed to the regular kind of crosswalk lights. If you are gonna remove it altogether, then you don't need the data. But if you're going to remove the Hawk light and put a different type of signal in, I think you need to get some data from MassDOT to, dis to determine whether or not people just run through those as well. Because again, this is not an intersection. The cars are not going to already be stopped. They're going to be coming at 40 miles an hour. And so when those yellow lights come on, the rapid rectangular ones, 
I'm assuming MassDOT has some data to, to tell you whether or not people blow through those just like they blow through the hawk light. Um, so I think that's kind of, that, that would be the direction that I would suggest to the board is number one, determine whether or not you want to keep the crosswalk. If you don't, then you don't need to go any further into your data analysis. If you do, then I think finding out from MassDOT what they would replace it with is imperative because if the data that they have suggests that those regular crosswalks uh, are not something that they would use here then kind of answers your question but again going back to the beginning I really dislike the light I, I just I don't there's three lights on there I don't understand why they couldn't be red yellow green just like a regular traffic light why can't one of them just be changed to a different color um, to me, that would have made a, a heck of a lot more sense, but I'm not an engineer, so that's my two cents. And again, Senator, thank you for uh, your help on this. Do we know why that light was put there? I know Joyce alluded to the fact that she doesn't really understand, but does anybody know why they decided to put that there? Because nope. there was a crosswalk there to begin with that went from the church over to across the street. So that there's always been some type of crosswalk there, but in their thinking, the DOT thought that they would put a light there that would help with the crossing right there so that they could go to the bus stop on the other side, which is in front of Cumberland's. So there was also, and Joyce, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I worked here for 20 years, but it's, it's faded in my memory. I believe there was also a crosswalk in the West Street area in the Commons. And because of the fact that we've had a lot of fatal crashes at that corner, I think it was determined that that was not a good place for it. And so I think what they did ultimately was find this place between what Joyce was just describing and the West Street and put it there. Problem is, is that if you're heading eastbound, coming from the bridge and heading to Amherst, and there are cars queued, meaning the lights activated and cars are stopped and you come around that corner at 40, which is what the speed limit is. Yeah. I mean, I've been in a cruiser and I've had to jam my brakes on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that, it's tight on that side. That's a thought I had is that that's, it's in a terrible place from what you, based on what you just said, I agree with you 100%. It's too close to that corner, the curve in the road and people can't react fast enough when they're coming around the corner. So, I don't know, what's the demand for it? Do we know that? How, much, how often does it get used? Again, okay. again, my guess is, is that MassDOT probably has data on that as well. Um, I, I, uh, we're going through this Safe Roads MOU um, to get more speed board signs from the state. And part of the MOU is that we, that this machine itself will collect data and we send it to the state. I don't think that there's many things out there that don't collect data anymore. I don't think they even make them um, that, that won't somehow collect this data, whether how much it's used and, and they probably have data about you know how often it's um, disregarded. Uh, so I think you know requesting that from them would be helpful, but like I said, if you're if you're going to remove it altogether, you don't have to go that far. If you're going to keep it, and you want to see if it's safe or safer than an alternative, that's where you're going to have to ask. We're going to have to ask MassDOT. Joanne, do you have any? Yeah. Uh, that light is what Mike said. Is first it comes on yellow for not blinking for a period of time. Then it blinks yellow, then it turns red. And that's the timing on that is totally different than the light on Damon Road. That one just comes on, yet blinks yellow and goes to red. And I think that we need to look at the timing on that. And I think Mike is also right. green, yellow, and red. It would be a lot more what, understandable for the people if we're gonna leave it there. Timing, Jane, is that uh, MassDOT has engineers that are that specifically do the mathematics to figure out timing of traffic lights. 
So they have people that have these equations that are seven pages long to figure this stuff out. They're super smart people. Um, we have put requests into uh, these engineers in the past and they actually, they do listen to us. And so uh, if the timing is an issue, we can certainly reach out uh, to, to one of the engineers and see if they can take a look at it. But they're gonna go by whatever the state standards are. And my guess is, is whatever it's set at is what they, what that threshold is. But they're missing the point of common sense. They can be as smart as can be, but the common sense is not there for the center of town of Hadley and the traffic that goes through there on a daily basis from six o'clock in the morning until six o'clock at night at least. Uh, Senator, do you have any other comments about how we should proceed with the DOT and have them listen to us? Because they're not very good at listening. <laughs> um, well, first of all, uh, thank you to the chief for that uh, overview. Um, and yes, chief, you did make your concerns completely known. It was um, helpful uh, in my conversation with the director. Uh, you know, I, uh, I work for the town and so does Dan. Um, so I am, I would be most happy to work with you to schedule a meeting with Director Leavenworth, um, who is new herself, right? So there's an opportunity or new to this role, there's an opportunity for us to, uh, you know, ask for the director's sort of new focus on this. Um, so I'd be happy to work with you, you know, to get the soonest possible meeting with the town. Uh, and then, you know, you can, the town can help direct Dan and I to, uh, to get the kind of folks from Mascot who you would like to see, you know, it's exactly with this, uh, the expertise that folks are talking about. You can also um, help direct the agenda in advance. Like, hey, we want to talk about these things um, at the meeting. So that'll help Director Leavenworth get the right folks. Uh, and then we meet on the town's terms. You know, we can meet in Hadley. We can go to view the intersection together. All of these things are possible. Uh, and, you know, when we, I, I understand the urgency that the town is bringing and the family is bringing. And so we will work super quickly to set this up. And again, I, you know, I found the director very willing to engage. So I'm, I'm hopeful that it could be a productive meeting. So the board feel that I, I personally would like a, a, a meeting with the director, would everybody else? Yeah, I would. They're both nodding yes. yes. Yeah, Holly's nodding yes. Okay. All right. That would be uh, wonderful, Senator, if you could set that up and work with Carolyn to do that for, for us to, uh, and Chief Mason, so that we could be, in, he could be involved with it also. You may want to also try to, sorry. Try what? I was just going to say you may want to also try to find the history of how and why it was put there in the first place, you know, see if we can find the minutes of right. whatever meeting that was to see, or if anybody remembers, um, because. It seems to me it's related to the courthouse. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is that someone that wears a black robe said, we want a crosswalk there, and they got a crosswalk there. <laughs> yeah. I, I, there was a Hopkins student that was hit also. Um, many years ago when I was yeah. still in school. And it was, wow. Pat, it was crossing to, right, well, it was still Donut Man at the time. They were crossing south of that. So, so there is a history of having had somebody hit there once before, so I think it would behoove us all to have that meeting with the uh, Director Leavenworth and, and see what we can do to have a sit down with her. The, the agenda that you all would like, the town would like, and then also the kinds of conversations, the kinds of expertise that you would like Mascot to be able to bring um, so that it can be as productive as possible. And I think we send all of that in advance so that the director understands the team that she'll want to bring to meet the town's concerns head on. Great. Thank you so much for coming tonight and being participating this, in this discussion. Oh my goodness. Remember, I work. We, we, we also understand how busy your schedule is. So when you're able to take the time out and come and 
uh, be with us. Uh, we appreciate it. It's an important issue, and I so much appreciate the tone and the deep willingness and um, robust engagement. So um, I will follow up. I, I just am having a meeting this evening, but I'll follow up tomorrow or this evening after the meeting to um, to start working on the email to MassDOT with Carolyn and the chief um, to get it right. That would be great. Thank you so much. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Done. Yes. So if you I can just let like, <clears throat> you know that uh, Representative Kerry has been in, uh, in discussions with Senator Comerford and myself, and he did try to work this into a schedule and couldn't today. So he's, uh, we'll include him in all those conversations as well. All right. So should we, do you <laughs> understand what, what we want, or do we need to tell you? Because Senator Com Comfort said we should be as explicit as possible in what information we're trying I, to I would If you want, definitely give me information, meeting. yeah. So do you sure. want it now? Sure, now or send me an email. Okay, well, my concern is the history, why that thing got put there in the first place, <clears throat> and what its current historic usage is on a daily basis. I can remember the discussion. God knows I've been here long enough, but we did have um, a very long discussion. I don't know, Molly, if you're shaking your head or not, if you remember it or not. Um, Molly has laryngitis, so she's not able to project with us. I had to say that, Molly, because usually you're verbal, so I have to say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. I had that myself a couple of years ago. Everybody was glad about that. But anyway, um, so we could very well give Carolyn and e Molly, you can email your concerns, but do you remember when we had this, this discussion with DOT when they were redoing Route 9 in the center of town? I, I know it was when Marlo Warner was DPW director. Um, because he made the presentation to explain to us what a hawk signal even was. Um, and I agree with you, Joyce. I think they were trying to find a um, path away from West Street, um, but to allow another crossing to take place, and they landed on this particular spot. So close to <clears throat> the center of town where we made sure that the lights were working and people could cross in that area. So. It didn't make sense to us to have one that really didn't have any uh, good direction. And we just thought it was in the middle of very fast traffic. So, you know, we've already voiced was our opinion. Was there a reason that this conversation went on that they didn't want to put a traffic light at West Street and Route 9? Because that's always been a terrible intersection for cars to get out of West Street onto. That's where all the accidents happen. didn't want to. They heard our concerns and they just um, did what they felt they wanted to do when they well, were doing it. Kill two birds with one stone and also get data about the number of accidents between um, the Pride gas station and the center of town because maybe there's some sort of traffic calming uh, mitigation that could be wrapped into this. On either side, it's 40 miles an hour, then it goes down to 35 um, just before Eslon, and then to, I think, just after Weinzix. Yeah, you have five speed changes on Route 9. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, is it in possible instead to maybe, instead of going from 40 to 35 to 40 to 30, just for that high traffic area? But we've taught, we've had that discussion, and Chief Mason, you've been hired since then to know that we had that discussion about changing the. I think they acquiesced to some of our requests. I think they did change some of them, mm -hmm. but uh, not all of them. But we did ask for yeah. a change of uh, speed limit on Route Nine. Yep. It we actually, and I know <coughs> that uh, Lieutenant Cook wanted to do that also. Yep. Shouldn't there be like a twenty-one, a twenty mile an hour for the school zone anyway? If that's not posted. It's well, supposed to be yeah. when the lights are flashing. That would be make more sense if we had lights flashing in the center of town for a school zone 
like most towns do at 20 miles per hour when schools are in session. Well, that's I think that's what Molly was just saying about you know some type of traffic safety mitigation. Mm -hmm. But if we go, but if we stretch it a little bit further and go from Pride to Hopkins mm -hmm. and and see how many crashes we've had, maybe there's something that their engineers would look at, and maybe they would put a light in at West Street mm -hmm. at that point to try to stop traffic. And once they once it stops, then you know the speed up section is is in the hopkins area and they just can't get going fast enough um, maybe that's an option i don't know um exactly my guess is is we're not i mean they'd have to put in some type of a two a dual traffic light for for both those west street yeah. entrances onto route nine and it was probably just cost prohibitive for them so they figured we'll put the hawk well, it's people wanting to take the shortcut that's the problem yeah um, anything further do you all want to um, I'm talking to the ceiling but I'm not I'm talking to them but, um, do you all want to um, Mike has suggested and I would like to know if they ever have any of those hawk lights that are green yellow and red ever had what Jane the hawk lights where instead of a solid yellow flashing yellow red it was solid green flashing yellow red so that it was more like a normal traffic light if you will and people might understand it i'm unaware of something like that but that we can put that in the email uh you know as far as what we're going to be asking them so they can bring their experts my guess is, is they would bring designers uh with them to explain all the different types of lights they have and if after tonight's meeting if you have anything please email your questions to carolyn mm -hmm. My, my suggestion would be um, if the town, you know, as far as what to ask for, if the town does decide to remove the light, but they want to keep the crosswalk, what would they replace it with? And do they, you know, is, do they have any data to suggest the, the replacement is safer? Uh, in any way than the hawk. <clears throat> I mean, I know <laughs> the town's experience with mass DOT is not great in every area. They're not great communicators or anything, but my guess is is that they probably have data to back up that that light, if you want to crosswalk there, that light's the light <clears throat> appropriate for it. I don't like it, but I'm not a mass DOT engineer either, so. Great. Mike, are you familiar with the uh, crosswalks up at Mount Holyoke College? Mount Holyoke, um, yeah, the ones with the, that have the raised yellow. Yeah, so lights. they've got they've got stuff on the sides of the street that are at eye level. Yep. Then the, the street lights up. That's and that. I, that my is daughter lives in South Hadley. I go there quite yep. a bit, and that attracts my attention very easily. And I think that's that is one of the designs that they use on in places where you have traveling traffic, like here, mm -hmm. at a at speed that is not at, at an intersection. So yeah. you need to notify people to slow down and stop on a road where you wouldn't normally be stopping. And they so I think this. that's what those are, are they call them re rectangular reflective traffic lights or whatever mm -hmm. they are for, for crosswalks. And they're designed specifically for vehicles at travel speed. Um, I think that's what they design those things for. They and so that's why I'm college. curious as to why we didn't Maybe they didn't have those. I mean, I don't know how long those Mount Holyoke ones have been in, but I mean, maybe they were trying something new. Has, has something like that. Yeah, yeah, they just said. Yeah, they have the raised, uh, you know, the like the speed humps. I, don't, I know that's a that's a four letter word here, but mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, uh, there are. I, I think there's other other ways to do it. And you're right. The, those Mount Holyoke ones are right in your eye. I, you know line your, your line of sight um plus there's um there's uh there's not only visual but there's physical cues mm -hmm. to get you to slow down and stop for those things um you know I the will hawk say, lights are high up and um i think another concern though too is that once they're done with route nine because i think you see especially in rush hour time that the traffic is backed up almost to combis already and that when you have two roads, you won't have such a backup and a slowdown. So I think the concern too is people will be traveling faster yep. 
once you have a four lanes instead of just the two. Well, that's a good point to bring out to them at that <clears throat> meeting also. Yeah. Ad hoc lights. And that they collect it, but you know. Mm -hmm. There, there is studies on them, mostly for the, in promoting them. But <laughs> so I don't know if you want to. If those are going to be as reliable, they're more. It's not specific towards this area. There, it's pretty generic, you know, all over the place. But I can I can send you the copy of that. But I think you need to hear it from Mass DOT. Oh yeah. Yeah. But the reality is, we're in a really, really strange, unique situation where you have you know smaller population towns surrounding this, and just it's just kind of a. a, a I, I would say it's a really unique area that we live in with the level of traffic that we have on a single road in a, in a small town. You have a 50, you have a 5,000 person population in this town and the average annual daily traffic count that goes through the entire town on all roads, average, it, right, it raises and lowers when school is in session is 100,000 cars. That's not just Route 9, that's all of your roads. And all of your roads now, because of the construction in this town, are being used. Mm -hmm. We're getting traffic complaints on every road possible because people are trying to find any way around this mess out here. So you have, that unique is the best possible way to put it. I can't think of another community in this state that looks like this. 5,000 people and 100,000 people driving through it on a daily basis. Um, so with that uniqueness comes, you know, the, the chance for us to be unique with the solutions that we come up with, you know, for situations like this. And so hopefully, what's her name? Director Leavenworth. She has a military she's prison named after her. That's Leavenworth. Well. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully she'll have some answers for us. So maybe she'll have some answers. But, but uh, the other I, reality is that people have to understand that they're through everything, there may not be a better option. Right, exactly right. And that's that's the other part of this thing is that, you know, before this tragedy happened, uh, I can't tell you if I had, if we've had another incident since they put that in, um, nor can I tell you besides my own dislike for the complexity of the light that mm -hmm. I've heard any official complaints about the light either um, so that you know as as terrible of a tragedy as this was um, I think that does need to be said because you're right I don't want people to come in here expecting this is going to be changed and fixed and nothing you know whatever nothing bad's going to happen again because they may come in and show us you can't put anything else there this is what it is and this is what it's staying well, even in the center of town, there's accidents all the time, whether the lights turn or not or whatever's going on, and certainly that could happen to a pedestrian in the center of town. I mean, mm -hmm. you this, don't know. This intersection right over right over here, <laughs> nine in middle, yeah. yeah. this was ranked the third most dangerous intersection in Massachusetts for like six years straight mm -hmm. before they changed the lighting pattern. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this yeah. town has a lot of crashes, and mm -hmm. if we can do something to mitigate especially vehicle versus pedestrian crashes, mm -hmm. um, I think we should take the opportunity to do so. But Amy's right. They may come in and give us information that suggests that this is your best option. You either leave this here or you take the crosswalk out altogether and don't let people cross the street there. We didn't want it there to begin with. Well, like I said. We argued with them be... about that. I mean, that's that's <clears throat> what happened back in, in, in when they put it in to begin with. But they mm -hmm. insisted on putting one in. Oh. So. I think if we can get the numbers that indicate that there's a need for it, that's one thing. If there's right. not a need for it, then, you know. Yeah, people are pushing that button 50 times a day. You probably, you probably yeah. need it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know. I mean, I travel through twice a day, sometimes four times. And most of the time when those things are, the only issue I ever see is when it's blinking, people not going. Yeah. And so on the opposite end of the spectrum, that's kind of more of what you want. No. So. All right. We'll get everybody gather their questions and send them to Carolyn, <clears throat> and uh, we'll have her set up the meeting with the DOT 
Director Levensworth and go from there. All right? Sounds good. Okay. Awesome. Moving on. Thank, Thank you. Chief. Anything yeah. else, Chief, tonight? I don't know. <laughs> Are you um, staying or going? There's nothing else. I'm going. Okay. I, I just I had so. one question for you. You have your, uh, which I can announce later, you have the food drive and you have the tree still, Angels? Yes, the Angel Tree. Lauren is actually making flyers up right now that we will send out to all the okay. department heads and she's going to be posting all over town. Okay. So I'll take care of that after. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, any public comments this evening? We're going back to the beginning of our agenda, and we skipped over that. So any public comments uh, here on Zoom? I can make a couple. Would you like to? Sure. Sure. Um, I'd like to thank the select board for the uh, Allowing us to have the Russell School Forum. That was pretty successful. I didn't expect as many people that, you know, showed up. There was <clears throat> plenty of people who were interested, and it seems like it's, you know, it's the right thing to do. Get public opinion, it's a public building. So thank you all so much. Um, the other thing is that um, I, I grew up in this neighborhood, and I cross Route 9 quite a bit in my car now. But now my kids cross Route 9 in this neighborhood on foot several times a day. Um, I don't know if they use that signal every time, but they use it. Um, I think it, it should be redesigned. I, I'm a strong proponent. I would I highly recommend a crosswalk in that area. Is it in the perfect area? Who knows? It could be this way or that way a little bit. There's always, for me, I grew up around here. I, I know that that crosswalk has, was, has been there, you know, for the church. And um, when there was no light there, it didn't work much better or worse. Um, really, I think if it were, you know, for me to design it, I'd use a red, yellow, green light, standard traffic signal. And... You know, where you see in other areas like in Northampton, as, as you go toward North King, there's a, 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 a light up sign that says signal ahead. And when the signal's red, the red lights mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And there's one like that in Belchertown where the light is just over a hill. That could probably be, you know, very useful in that situation, especially with the curve and the house mm -hmm. blocking the eastbound traffic. You know, the westbound traffic, maybe not so much, but a standard signal, green, yellow, red, that everybody understands is probably the way to go at that crosswalk. But I would highly recommend keeping a crosswalk somewhere in that area because it does get a ton of use. Um, you know, it's just an important thing. So thanks for addressing all of that. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and there's no one else for consent agenda or uh, public comments. Sorry, I have consent agenda on my brain. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go to the consent agenda. Uh, we have warrants uh, AP 2319, AP 2318 INS, AP 2318V, AP 2385, AP 2318. We have a common vehicular license for Homeland Suites, Homeward Suites. We have a class two auto dealers license, correct? Yes. And for that's for Northwest Auto Sales. We have a farmer's market wine license for home fruit wine. And we have an award of a sewer pump station roof contract to US Metal Roofing. Any questions? Any, well, can I get a motion? So, so moved. Second. Oh, Jane. yes, I'm sorry, I forgot roll call vote. Roll call, roll call vote. vote. Um, I'm so having practice. Roll call vote. Chungalo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Thank you. Uh, that would be the consent agenda. 
I don't see Eversource here the yet. Eversource is here. Yep. Oh, they're, they're on remotely, there? Yes. Okay. All right, we'll go to them quickly. They want us to sign a contract. Uh, it's, it's a letter Tracy? of support. A letter of yep. support. So Tracy Dyke, are you yeah. here? Redmond? I'm, he I'm here. Can you hear me all right? Great. Yes, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you again. As you may remember, um, we provided an update about the proposed solar and storage project at our area work center in Hadley at your last meeting. And at your request, we provided a draft letter of support for your consideration. We are hoping to build um, solar canopies um, and rooftop solar at this site. And uh, we would be um, very glad if you were in support of the project and if you are, um, that we did provide a draft letter of support. Uh, we would need to go to the Department of Public Utilities um, to get approval to, to begin the process of this project. And so we would, we would do that if we had your support and, and that draft letter is, is sort of a, a way to express that. But you, of course, be welcome to change it or edit it if you like. It's our third time that uh, Eversource has come before us. Um, does any one of the board members have any questions? I have a, a, an issue or a concern with the draft letter. Okay. Uh, I believe there's a, a something missing, an omission. Second to the last paragraph begins, once approved by the DPW, the town of Hadley will review this project through our standard permitting and zoning processes and will seek all permits necessary to complete the project. Town of Hadley will not seek permits for this project. I believe NSTAR should be the ones that will seek the permits. So I think yes. that N will be installed in there. Other than Thank that. Thank you for that clarification. You're absolutely right. Resource will seek all permits necessary to complete the project. And also, just to be clear, the letter um, references DPU, uh, Department of Public Utilities. With this letter. So, with corrections, is there a motion? Yeah, I will move to accept that we or approve that we will sign this letter based on the, the correction I just mentioned. There's second. Uh, any other further discussion? Roll call vote Chungla? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. Keegan? Yes. And Nevin Smith? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. Thank you, Tracy. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good evening. I'll follow up with the revised letter shortly. Thank you. Take care. All right. And we can move on to the Hadley Snowmobile Club um, usage of Neurotic Trail Tunnel. Um, Steve or Paul, who, who would like to speak? Or. What? <laughs> oh, you're on a roll tonight, huh? Giving me, a, giving me the steering wheel <laughs> here. Um, so, Carolyn, did you receive the emails with the the draft um, letters? I put one of the letters. Let's see. You do have. Yeah, we have one of the yep. letters. We have one of the letters. Yes. Um, uh, I have not heard back from Larry Tucker, who is our uh, on our legislative team for the state association. Um, he did get back to me and said that this one that um, had Molly's signature on, or name on the bottom was the one, the draft that we should be following. That's the one I uploaded. Can you give um, some of the members who aren't familiar with this former uh, a request that you've had before and you're bringing it up to the table, just to give a little background about it, what this is for? Um, it's a, we, we're looking for a letter of support, um, once again, for the Hadley Snowmobile Club to have access of the rail trail and the tunnel. The tunnel, from how I understand, is owned by MassDOT. The rail trail is owned by DCR. MassDOT, we've been to a, a few different uh, meetings at the District 2 office, and MassDOT consistently has be, been behind the project. They, they say, that, yes, this is the perfect solution. It's for your, your club to have access to the tunnel. The problem is DCR, and they're, they, you know, although they, they gave us money for a groomer to groom the trails, 
they're unwilling to let us use that section of trail for about it's less, less than a mile that we would need to get on where we have per permission from one abutting owner, get on the rail trail, go through the tunnel, and then per permission from the other abutting owner. So we can get on the trail and off the trail with landowner permission, but using the trail, they don't, you know, for some reason, they don't think it's a good idea. Now, um, you know, it's only a matter of time as we experience people crossing Route 9 before something happens. And we want to avoid this. I mean, there, there's, um, you know, history of DCR <coughs> allowing people to use rail trails and tunnels in other parts of the state. And where, you know, our club is right in, in the valley here where we don't get a lot of snow and our season, our sledding season is getting shorter and shorter. And every two or three years, we get really enough snow to use our whole trail system. And so it's, it's, it's not to the point where you'd see sleds go zooming through there every year, all season long. Our season is also very short, usually between two and six weeks these days. 2015, yeah, we got club of the year. And we groomed our trails from, you know, uh, Belchertown all the way to Sunderland. Um, that was a big year, uh, but we still had a lot of trouble crossing Route 9. Um, it's just dangerous. And, you know, we've offered to uh, groom that section of trail for the sleds and also clear it for bikes to no avail. The, the problem is not going to go away. Um, you know, we've, the sledders aren't going to go away. And, you know, on a standard year, we've got 40 or 50 members. On a year like 2015, we had over 120 members. And it gets busy out there. Um, it's, it's just a safety issue. It's not a, you know, you know who owns what issue. It, we just want to make sure that the people who are using the trail stay safe. You know, we have. Where, where would you get on um, from the the north side? I and wish then the map app was up and running. It's not. Uh -huh. it's, they don't. They don't put the app up and running until after hunting season is when the trails open. Um, I could show you on on the online map. Um, you can well, just just from, you can from just from say basically we're... basically Wysox Fields. Yeah. Um, right near uh, the, the uh, 51 and over housing development that Barry Roberts just put up, right in that neighborhood mm -hmm. was, is where it would be one entrance. And just at the, uh, at the back fence of uh, the storage units on Mill Valley is where okay. we would get off. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's clear sailing in either direction mm -hmm. from there. Mm -hmm. And right now, the way that the trail is marked it comes out between uh, um, geez, where the old stand the vegetable man was. The, the, the we used to cross yeah. there in my yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, it's been there forever. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and head up to the house. It's it's pretty tight. There's a lot of development in that area now, especially with the the new housing development. And, you know, we're not a. It's not a big deal to move the trail. Um, mm -hmm. The app lets us do it in real time. And if I call the association with a, a, a trail modification, it will literally change the map for everybody in the state mm -hmm. within minutes. So if we have to move that trail um, from one, you know, between, you know, these two houses to between these two houses, we can do that quite quickly. Um, that's not the issue. You know, the issue is that we need the trail in a safe spot, not necessarily convenient. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's been a, a long time we've been working at this. And historically, I mean, I've been, I've been traveling these trails since I was a kid. And before it was a rail trail, it was a snowmobile trail. Um, what was DCO's reason for denying your request? Um, they really give no good reason. Um, they don't plow this section of the trail. Right. Um, and we offered to at least, you know, groom this side, plow that side. And uh, there's no, 
you know, they, they seem to think it's, it's still dangerous no matter what. Um, you know, what, and it, the, the ironic thing is that people do use the rail trail for cross-country skiing. And all over the whole state, cross-country skiers use snowmobile trails and they love that they're groomed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they're very, the snowmobilers and the cross-country skiers are very courteous to each other, very aware that we both, you know, it's a shared, shared mm -hmm. use trail. In mm -hmm. many cases throughout the state, it's shared use. Um, so, do you think one of their concerns might have been like potentially using it too late in the season, maybe causing any damage on the the paved portion? It's, I mean, it's possible, but you know, if you look at the other data, um, we can get grants to put down neoprene mats or or uh, PTEX mats throughout the whole length of the tunnel, mm -hmm. so that if we do have sledders that have pick tracks and carbide runners, it's not going to damage that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that happens in other states, it happens in other parts of this state. Um, you know, the bulk of the sledding happens west of here, but we do have sledding east of here. And mm -hmm. uh, last year, was it last year or the year before, the bulk <coughs> of the sledding was happen happening actually from Belchertown to the east. That's where all the snow was. And, you know, the clubs who don't typically get a lot of traffic, we're getting a ton of traffic. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of back and forth between fish and wildlife and, uh, you know, DCR. We get we, we do have a good stewardship agreement with them. And, we you know, we do have keys to the gates and we take care of the trails on the on the Hoyle Range. And, uh, you know, it's a it's part of a, a state system that everybody relies on and when part of, part of it goes down uh, people get backed up and they don't know where to go and they're going to start to look for ways out they're going to start to look for a new crossing they're going to make their own mm -hmm. and that's just plain dangerous uh, we've had it happen in several neighborhoods where no just nobody knows where to go mm -hmm. so so what do we what do we need to do? So yeah, I'm in, I was going to say I'm inclined to, to update the letter so to up, to resend it. I got a I got a question for you, Dan. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're after from us. All it is is yep. support of what you're trying to do. So if we agree that this makes sense, you take this letter and then what? What happens? Well, it's it's been done before. We've sent them to uh, you know Paul Janagi, uh, Commissioner Roy. Um, you know, we've been working with Dan Carey. We've been working with Joe Comerford. They're aware of the situation. So it's just reinforcement. You know, we just send it out to mm -hmm. them. And, you know, um, you know, it's just another vertebrae in the backbone to make sure that everybody knows that this is an issue. You know, like I said, uh, you know, MassDOT already knows it's an issue. They already know the solution. Mm -hmm. um, DCR knows it's an issue, but, you know, it's, it's for some reason, it's kind of hard to drive it home. I mean, with the with the recent tragedy on Route Nine, maybe that could shed a little light. Mm -hmm. Does somebody, uh, Jane, would like to speak. One of the things you should add to the letter, I think, one of the things you should add to the letter is the shared use of the trail and that part of it, specifically saying that that it's. I mean, every you know that, but let's put it out there, in black and white. We're, we're not uh, ignorant to that fact. Um, I don't think they are, but I think, you know, it's a good idea. We'll add that in. Um, I guess the reason I asked my question was, you don't get to go face to face with these people. You just send them a letter and- No, we know who they are. I mean, we- But do you get to meet with them? Yes, not? we've had, I mean, they, they uh, a couple of times a year, they'll come to our, uh, you know, our association, our state association meeting, where all the clubs, yeah, once a month we get together with all the clubs in the state, there are 30 some odd clubs. And, you know, since since quarantine has been happening, it's been terribly convenient. Everybody's online where it used to be, everybody came to Northampton and they come from all the way from Boston and they come from Pittsfield once a month. And uh, at least a couple of times a year, we'd have DCR at the meeting, we'd have the EPOs at the meeting, Fish and Wildlife would send a, a, a delegate from time to time from their outfit. Um, 
you know, there's, there's, you know, we're, we're always meeting with them. It's just for some reason a thorn in their side rather than a, you know, a viable solution. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in, I'm in favor of supporting this as long, you know, when you modify it so that it, it reflects the fact that you, you don't want to have sole use of it so that. Mm -hmm. The people that you're trying to get permission from will understand that you're you're not trying to be selfish here. <clears throat> I mm -hmm. think that'll help you, and I think it'll make us feel better supporting you in that way. Sure. I mean, I can I, uh, I can make a couple of edits, and um, when I don't know if Larry's out of town or whatnot, maybe we could get him into the uh, into the mix here, mm -hmm. and maybe submit to you a, a final okay. draft. Uh, at a future meeting, and we can have it sent out after your approval. Sounds fine. Sounds to good me. to me. Can we have a motion to that, please? Can we? Can we move to approve pending? Hold on, Steve's got a question. Oh, sorry. We've been uh, telling everybody that's multi-use from from day one, and that's nothing new at all. We've been doing that right on, especially Larry, all the meetings, the team rooms, and future mm -hmm. So we've been doing a lot of work. It's always been multi. -use. And you would think that the DCR would understand that because you use the trails on the Holyoke Range, you groom them, you have mountain bikers, you have <coughs> people cross-country skiing yeah. on them. I mean, everybody uses those trails up there. I mean, so they should understand that. So, you know, yeah. so a motion by Amy t yeah. pending your letter to us. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Roll call vote. Chungalu? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Pizer? Yes. Keegan? Yes. And Nevin Smith? Yes. So with this vote, we're approving it already, so you don't need to come back to us. Is that correct? You can just well, yeah, edit I'll, it. Uh, and I will send you the, the edited version, and you know, as long as you all agree you know we'll, whoever if the chair signs it or the whole board signs it it mm -hmm. doesn't really matter to me as long as the letter goes out um, it, it, if you it, get it to us for the uh, first meeting of December we can just take a look at it and, okay and if we don't have it a problem we don't even have to vote on it again okay, okay. Um, the, um, I'm not sure if just yes. a, a paper letter is gonna go out because Larry uh, emailed and said that it should be CC'd to uh, Doug Rice, the DCR commissioner, as well as Dan Carey and Joe Comfort. Um, they've seen these before, so. I can help you distribute it from Perfect. once the select board signs it, because I've sent your letter out before for y'all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Great. I'm familiar with it. Thank you all so much. And, and Dan, you and I can work together on the letter, because I think there are some other things that might be valuable to add to it, like the amount of cars that go by that are on Route 9 every day. Cool. Um, so yeah, and we can get it on our letterhead. Thanks again, folks. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Good welcome. luck. Good luck with this. Love the state. <laughs> I'm on the state tonight. Oh, I was going to say, I was like, sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission, but you know. Forgiveness. <laughs> ask, will you just, it, for Jim Boyle, he was here for Northwest Auto Sales. Can you just let him know he's been approved and he can leave if he'd like? Where is he? On Zoom. Oh, yes. Jim, Jim Boyle. Is he on Zoom? Can he hear us? Yeah, he's muted. He might, yeah. Jim? There he is. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Didn't know you were on, but we did approve your license for tonight. I, so you're, thank you so, so you're, much. You're all set, unless you had, did you have anything you wanted to say to us or just we're good? No, just thank you guys very much. All right, good luck to you in your business. All right, bye-bye. Right. Uh, I just noticed he was staying with us and probably he didn't. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, infrastructure fees, do you want to just go over that tonight, Carolyn? Yep, yep. And I'm going to have actually Susan um, Glowatsky's um, on remote, and she's going to review the advisory opinion. We did have a request to get town council's opinion on that infrastructure fee, um, and we did, and we had some discussions with town council. Um, and Sue is here to explain it and what our recommendation is. But we just see Jane. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sue. 
Well, okay. Thank you. Um, so Lisa Mead uh, sent us a uh, advisory opinion um, regarding the facts of the infrastructure fee. Um, there is mention in the initial facts that uh, the March 3rd, 2021 meeting of the select board referenced this fee to be a sewer infrastructure fee, which we corrected. Um, on April 6, 2022, it was uh, explained and voted on by the selectmen that uh, this is simply an infrastructure fee um, that will be utilized by the water and or sewer department as needed to assist with increased operating expenses, including but not limited to debt service, capital costs and maintenance. Uh, and specifically, we were looking at this for uh, the Route 9 water sewer uh, replacement project. Uh, she goes on to discuss the law and the uh, various sections of Mass General Law that we have accepted into our bylaws. Uh, and then she goes into an analysis and I'm going to read her analysis. So, um, and, and I'm going to comment on it uh, because we had further discussion about it. Uh, she said, based on the aforementioned statutes, fees charged by the town of Hadley for water or for sewer must be related to actual use unless such fees are for a betterment or special assessment, in which case the town may charge for potential use. Fees charged under either of these categories must be utilized for the provision of services in the respective categories. Therefore, any revenue generated through water and sewer bills must be used proportionally for the provision of water and sewer to the town residents. She says, a general infrastructure fee is not authorized by the applicable statutes, meaning the ones that we had already adopted in our bylaws. And I said to her, okay, so I'm confused because the bylaws that we have accepted, uh, all of the criteria we have followed with the infrastructure fee. And she said, well, they're not authorized by the applicable statutes, but they're not prohibited either. Um, so she said, I recommend the town adopt Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 39J, which would allow for the town to implement a pricing system, which includes the cost of the provision of water and sewer services to the residents, including services not otherwise accounted for. So he is suggesting that you um, adopt chapter 40, section 39J, uh, which essentially covers everything. I did say to her, how do we remedy the charges we have already uh, charged to residents? And she said, you already have because you've apportioned them appropriately to water and sewer users. Okay, so are we looking to have a vote on that tonight? In there for you. Okay. Under recommended action. Okay. So is that something that the select board can do or does the town yes. meeting have to approve? It does this? not have to be town meeting. Select board have the authority to do that. Okay. So there is a motion to accept the MGL. Would right, anybody so like to make that? I will do it. I'll read it. You gonna do you have it to read, Jane? Yes. I move we accept the MGL Chapter 40, Section 39J, which will allow the town to implement a pricing system which includes cost of the provision of water and sewer services to the residents, including services not otherwise accounted for. Uh, any further discussion? If none, roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Chungaloo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. Keegan? No. Yeah. Nevin Smith? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So moved. All right. 
Uh, we will go to the Town of Code of Conduct. Um, we've all had a chance to review that from the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any changes or anything that did not uh, appear to be good to approve? And would anybody like to make a motion? Any, any discussion on it? I think Molly does. Molly's trying to say something. <laughs> no, just making a motion to approve it, as is. The discussion. All those in favor, roll call vote. Roll call vote. <laughs> Chungalo? Yes. Parsons? Yeah. Iser? Yes. Keegan? Yes. And Nevin Smith? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we have a code of conduct for the town. Um, we'll do town administrator report. Yes, it's it's very short. I had last week off and the past few days have been play, play, playing catch up, but I did want to make an announcement. Um, the Hadley Senior Center, the, where we are right now, um, on November 17th, which is tomorrow at 2 p.m., uh, they often have coffee with a cop. And Haley wanted me to make sure I shared this with the public. Uh, that tomorrow is going to be a forum with local professionals, including um, Hadley's co-responder with the Hadley Police Department, Emma Riley. She's a new social worker that responds to calls. She's from East Hampton, Liz Bluff, the ServiceNet's Director of Program Development, Seth Dunn, Jen Matoni from the Pioneer Valley Coalition for Suicide Prevention, Cassie Kramer from the MA Massachusetts Association for Mental Health, and Carmen Lee, founder of Stamp Out Stigma, uh, anyone can come to that, and it's going to be a very informative, um, meet, informal, um, but informative meeting. So, so we'll be recording it too. Excuse me? We'll be recording it. And Hadley Media will be recording it as well. Perfect. Yeah, that's Anything all I else? for right now. That's it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other announcements? Um, I do have a couple um, just to remind people that there is a food drive going on at the public safety complex and they also still have their tree tree uh, angel tree available if you want to adopt um, an angel you can so you can um, go to the police station and get a tag that's on their tree and uh, uh, buy presents for some family we'd appreciate it um, I have uh, one passing, passing. of um, Nancy Feldman. So condolences to her sons and her family. She's hmm? a lifelong resident. Oh, and I don't believe I said the last time Ken Parsons Ken passed. Parsons, yeah. um, so lifelong resident of Hadley also. Um, so our condolences to his family also. Is that it? Yeah. I think so. Sure. Yes? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Any other any others going on? We're good. No. All right. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Motion, Motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. <laughs> <Jinx>. <laughs> that could Second. sing a song. Go for it. <laughs> Second. Day. Roll call vote. Chungaloo. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Iser. Yes. Keegan. Yes. And Nevin Smith. <laughs>